Welcome to Canadian Steam on the Move, Part 1. I'm Doug Haddowin with photographer John Freising. We are about to view some rare and vintage film footage taken around southern Ontario back in the 1950s. What you will see will be of interest to all fans of Canadian steam power. Although gone from the rails and remaining only in memories and faded photographs, these films will rekindle that excitement that made this mode of transportation so exciting to everyone. Join with us now as we return to those days of Canadian steam on the move. Doug, these are my earliest movie films. They start off in late 1955 uh, when I took a small trip with some of the members from the Upper Canada Railway Society to Collingwood and uh, to ride the mixed trains primarily between Beaton and Collingwood, Collingwood and Beaton, uh, Alliston down to Georgetown. It's almost like another world, isn't it? Well, it certainly was a time capsule. Um, we had arrived here in Collingwood and stopped for lunch, and there was all kinds of activity, way freight arriving in from Allendale and leaving for Allendale, and uh, there was a consolidation sitting in the yard with an extra freight, that was uh, CN 2659. Yes, it certainly was another time, and a lot of the scenery that you see here in terms of the buildings and such has have disappeared over the years and been replaced by more modern architecture. Well, we're on our way down uh, to have beaten. Uh, we stopped off in Glen Cairn to do a little switching, the tall grass, and uh, at that point the locomotive crew had said to us that, gee, if we were really interested in uh, taking pictures, they uh, would stop more often. You don't get that kind of cooperation these days. That's for sure. Here we are uh, in Galt. I, I had never before uh, photographed mainline action, and uh, this is something dear to your heart because this is a CPR westbound freight with a helper engine out of Gulf for Oars Lake. And I must confess my favorite locomotive is the second one, the H1A class 464, and it's engine number 2817. Well known to rail fans of the Toronto era uh, and uh, spent an equal amount of time at Lambton as it did at John Street. Certainly made a fine sight to me as they blasted away. Certainly made you think that tonnage was on the move. Now that lead engine will go up to Oris Lake, then back down to Galt, Y around and return to Toronto. That's right. We'll return just about within a mile of this scene here. This is West Toronto Junction, um, just at the east entrance to Lambton Yard, and, and uh, this is the Sudbury Local. There used to be a daily train running from Toronto up to Sudbury and back, and here she is arriving at West Toronto Station behind one of the little G5 class Pacifics, 12, 1267. That was a regular scene, wasn't it? Very much so for many, many years. This is a quick trip to Montreal, the east end of the Victoria Bridge over the St. Lawrence River. Uh, I was down there for photographing, actually, the interurban Montreal and southern counties. And here we are in Niagara Falls in uh, April of 56, and there's an old friend of yours here. Well, it knows Betty. 6077. Those engines didn't have a very long life, did they? They came out in the... Uh, spring and summer of 1944, and uh, were, of course, uh, around the south, southern Ontario operating area of the CN. And then a, a number of them went west in the latter days of steam, were converted to oil and used on freight trains. Well, while they were here, they put on a grand show, and they pulled just about every principal passenger train in uh, southern and southwestern Ontario. Sunnyside Station in the west end of Toronto is one of my favorite spots for taking pictures. And uh, here we are uh, one spring afternoon. This is the old CPR local passenger yeah. train. That 722. Used to That's the one. Used to connect with the afternoon 4 o'clock train from Toronto to Montreal, the afternoon pool train. And Doug, do you remember the Forest City Limited? Oh, ever. That engine, uh, 5704, was a regular engine on that train. Um, it uh, left Toronto uh, usually uh, around 4 o'clock in the afternoon and about four tracks over you would see a CPR 3000 class 444 going in the same direction as this was to London at very high speed. They were very competitive with one another. 
the next series of uh, pictures were taken on a field trip by the Upper Canada Railway Society into the Bruce Peninsula. And an old friend, CPD 10, class 1057, and uh, of course this locomotive is still very much in existence, being one of the prized possessions of Ontario Rail Association. And we hope to see it running very soon. This uh, series of pictures were taken on the branch line into uh, Durham. We're um, just uh, outside of Durham at the gravel pits. The train had stopped to do some switching and all the passengers, uh, all about a dozen of us, had disembarked to watch the crew put on a wonderful performance, including a flying switch. And uh, I don't think this, is, this operation is in the rule book. If you look very closely, you'll see that having gotten up some speed, they've detached the train from the remaining cars, thrown the switch, and these cars are now about to roll under their own gravity into the, into the siding for the uh, gravel pit. A very dangerous practice, no doubt. Notice we're going to get a salute from the brakeman here, herding the cars into the gravel pit. This operation, Doug, uh, was a quite a family affair. The engineer had his young son with him in the, uh, in the cab that day. Um, it was a very informal operation. We weren't paying too much attention to the timetable and by the time we finished uh, switching the gravel pit here we were at least an hour and a half late. Yes, I was very active in rail fanning in those days and I must admit that I missed a lot of the branch line operations in Ontario. So these are tremendous footages as far as I'm concerned and I'm enjoying them as I'm sure you are too. Well, everybody was enjoying it uh, on this particular day. Take a good look at that valve motion. The model railroaders amongst us will be very, very keenly interested. There's the rest of the uh, passengers. One's even tired enough to be sitting on the rails. However, we duly left the, uh, the gravel pit area and we arrived in Durham to find our counterpart, uh, the mixed train from Walkerton, uh, have, arriving in behind a, a CPR D4 class, number 445. Very, very interesting little engine. Uh, used to see many of those out on the branch lines and the one I remember particularly was the one that ran between Draneal and Lindsay and that connected with train number 36 on the Havelock sub. Uh, those of you who've ridden on that train will remember riding behind a D4G of that type. This operation here Doug, because we were so late, uh, not only did we change engines but the engine crews also changed so we had the same engine crew taking us back out to Saugeen Junction where we would meet the main line from Owen Sound. Here we are blasting out of town. You can just about measure the fireman's pace and shoveling in coal into the firebox if you look at that exhaust closely enough. A real tough way to make a living in those days, partly compensated for by the joys of railroading, which of course are shared by those of us watching this video. This is Saugeen Junction where we uh, joined the main line from Owen Sound. Uh, the conductor here with his manifest. Uh, engine crew, certainly the firemen here, taking a little bit of a, a relaxing pause. And it was at this point that we left the mixed train as we had to catch the regular passenger accommodation from Owen Sound back to Toronto. Now, the consist of this train leaves something to raise the eyebrows, wouldn't you think, John? I think so. Doug, you were mentioning about uh, the little D4s running uh, from up to Lindsay and Bob Cajun a few minutes ago, and uh, we have here uh, 492 on the mixed train from Peterborough via Renault to Bob Cajun, just leaving Lindsay. Three guesses, John. What does Renault mean? Not sure. That's Leonard spelled backwards. Obviously somebody on the CPR in days gone by his first name. A little bit of trivia if you wish. Lindsay has uh, always been a popular town for railroading during the days of steam and uh, the CNR had quite an engine house in town. Here we have a consolidation 2616 taking a very light freight eastbound to Peterborough 
And then the next scene is a typical of the freight operations that ran from Belleville to Peterborough through Lindsay and up to Midland. Okay. Those Macados, and this is a 3300 class. That's right, 3385. Uh, laterally, we're operating in the Winnipeg region in Western Canada, and of course, were moved eastward as dieselization progressed over the prairies. A little further along that same line to the west, we come to Aurelia. This is Aurelia Station, <clears throat> and we have CNR 5560 with uh, the train from Midland uh, to Lindsay arriving, and it was at this point that passengers would disembark from Midland and connect with the regular southbound passenger train from North Bay to Toronto. 5560 gives us a very good example of a former Grand Trunk locomotive. Here's one of my favorite haunts, John, and I'm sure it was yours too, Sunnyside. We have eastbound number six, just coming in from uh, Chicago. That engine 6076 was put on at Port Huron, and this train will pull into Union Station for a half hour stop or so before the afternoon train for Montreal leaves. Followed by another eastbound freight train, Doug, behind one of Canadian National's earlier Northern 6115. Yes, and a former maritime operator was a Halifax-based engine until about 19, uh, oh, 1955, and then dieselization bumped it out of the east up to Ontario. Here comes a, a, a much later, more later day Northern 6248, this time westbound into Mimico Yard. These engines, I guess, saw a lot of service in freight and a little bit in passenger. And strangely enough, 5704 is not on the Forest City this afternoon. Instead, we have a bullet-nosed Betty. 6079. Yes, that's an unusual head-end power for this train. Usually it has a much faster engine, and uh, today is the exception rather than the rule. Well, Doug, you and I never did agree on how fast fast was, but 6079 at 80 miles was fast enough for me. I'll agree to that. Here we are up near Owen Sound, not nearly as fast. This is uh, the mixed operation up to uh, Wyarton, and we have one of the little E-10A class moguls, number 86, doing the honors. This was my first attempt at motorcading or chasing a train by automobile, and uh, of course today if you were to repeat it, you would, for this operation, practically have been forced off the road by all the motorcaders. Yeah, and they're all driving Corvettes, I understand. <laughs> this is in, in uh, Wyarton, and uh, the crew weren't losing any time in uh, turning around their train and heading back to Owen Sound, and their beer stop, 86, uh, was um, turned around on a turntable, a rather interesting turntable, because it's one that's operated by the air, uh, from the air brakes of the locomotive. In fact, if you take a good look once the we get past the rolling passenger car here, you'll see the steam coming from the air pump, which was pumping furiously to keep up the air pressure to turn the turntable. As primitive as it may have seemed, it was far superior to the Armstrong turntable so prevalent on the CPR in those days. We're uh, pulling back onto the main line, collect our train, head back up to uh, Parkhead, uh, where we would uh, left the passenger cars to proceed on down to Toronto on the afternoon passenger train from Owen Sound. These locomotives um, aren't all gone. There's at least one of their class in existence in uh, Morrisburg at Upper Canada Village. Uh, certainly, I think, a, a class worthy of, uh, of uh, preservation. These engines used to be numbered in the 900 series, as I recall, and my recollection of them was the Hamilton Port Dover run up Ferguson Avenue and up the escarpment. Very, very interesting engine. Probably would have made a great fan trip locomotive in the 80s. Early uh, snowfall. Saturday, December the 1st, 1956, we're in Orangeville, which was a very busy intermediate spot on the CPR line, if you remember correctly, Doug, from Toronto to Owen Sound, and we have one of the numerous D-10, 10-wheeler class of the CPR, 1004 here, leaving for Wingham and Teeswater. 
Students of the CPR and STEAM would probably all agree that the D-10 was the backbone of that railway's STEAM generation. Certainly, they are a wonderful engine. Well, they certainly were out of Orangeville, the backbone. Here's 1081 again, uh, southbound with the Allura Way Freight. This is West Toronto Station, and coming down from Owen Sound is train number 172 with a heavy Pacific number 5250. These engines were poetry to watch, and they could pull quite a train. Passing the old uh, mechanical interlocking tower at West Toronto, uh, long gone unfortunately, but it stayed quite an operation. Here we have the Advanced Dominion, Getting close to Christmas now, and we have a fantastic CPR diesel lash-up, so typical of the CP in those days. You're right, and just for the record, Doug, there are units 8482, 8462, 8557, and 8467. Here's CPR 2223, having uh, just cleared the Dominion, leaving with the way freight for MacTeer. Uh, these engines, Doug, I think, were originally built as passenger engines. They certainly were. The G1s, really, really interesting locomotives, 75-inch drivers, and still in very, very great evidence on the lines right up to the end of the final days of steam. And I, I believe there's one in the museum at Delson, or about to be placed there, 2231. Well, they may have been great engines for passenger service. I don't know about struggling with a freight train. Looks like old 2223 is having a bit of a tussle getting out of town here. That was not their intended purpose, I'm sure. Rather an interesting consist uh, sprinkled in this way freight. Uh, you'll see some work equipment. Uh, here's a Jordan spreader, uh, presumably for clearing out snow uh, later in the winter up north, followed by a rather large and wide load, some form of a tank. And here we have a double-headed freight train heading into the Lampton Yard. And we have a G1 on the pilot end of things, followed by a very interesting engine from the CPR perspective, and that is engine 5214. 5214 and some of her sisters are rebuilds. Rebuilds from the old 280N class into Mikado's. This was done in the late 40s and at great savings to the railway. Doug, uh, we ended up our filming for 1956 in and around London. I was on a New Year's Eve weekend, and here we have CN 6307 arriving with a freight train from Sarnia, immediately followed by uh, CN 6219 on the London to Windsor section of the Intercity Limited. The white running board, I believe, is a Spadina engine house signature, if I'm not mistaken. Well, right behind uh, 117, we have the regular train 17, the Inner City Limited, to Chicago. They, this was the train that would was divided in, in London, with the earlier section going to Windsor and the regular section proceeding on to Chicago. Right behind this came, uh, uh, was scheduled a local, London to Sarnia. Here we have... Uh, train 621 behind a lighter Pacific 5609, making some heavy weather up the grade here. Now coming in the other direction, we have a low-numbered 6300, all yeah. formerly Grand Trunk engines, and purchased by the CN uh, around 1951-52, and the, the Grand Trunk Western Deckel was replaced by the familiar CN Square at that time. They were a great engine to watch. Had a marvelous whistle, as I recall. Doug, from London, we proceeded down to St. Thomas on the London and Port Stanley Electric Railway. Uh, here we have Wabash Railway Yard Switcher number 51, a uh, rather unique animal. Too bad it's not around today. It would make a wonderful museum piece. And uh, from, from St. Thomas, we returned to London and then went eastbound, um, ended up on a mixed train running from Brantford towards Port Erie. Here we are at uh, Caledonia uh, with a CN 10-wheeler uh, on the Hamilton to Port Rowan mixed train. Yes, that engine was a regular in the roundhouse at Stewart Street in Hamilton. Here we have 6187 
with a Ford Erie to Windsor Freight. And for you trivia buffs, this engine again was a maritime steamer displaced by the diesels in the mid-50s. I remember riding on the Ocean Limited behind 6187 in 1954. Doug, take a close look at the fireman's beady eye. When we arrived in Fort Erie, uh, we were greeted by CN 8-wheel switcher 8431, uh, which was proceeding with a transfer across the uh, International Bridge to Black Rock, New York. Was that one of the ex-Buffalo Creek uh, 080s, do you know, John? I or? think it uh, was. Uh, the brace of those were purchased by the CN in the late 40s, as I remember. And this scene ended in uh, 1956. And little did we realize that uh, 57, uh, there was going to be even less steam to watch. But it opened up in January with back at... Uh, your favorite spot, mine, West Toronto, CNCP Junction, and here we have CN8421 doing some switching. Actually, Doug, I think the 8421 was the next Buffalo Creek uh, 080. This uh, next scene is up in Guelph, um, and uh, we had um, gone up for the Saturday for a little picture taking, and one of your favorites is here. This is my favorite, although they weren't a great engine. They were a picturesque one, and a very, very rare shot of 6400 pulling a freight train, and obviously just out of the Stratford shops and working her way back to Spadina. She was the, the engine that pulled the Royal Train in 1939, was she not? That's for sure. Well, not quite as glamorous, but every bit as photogenic is CPR 060-6301, and it was the town switcher in Guelph. Uh, at that particular period in time. Many rail fans would rather look at one of those than at a 6400. I wasn't one of them, however. <laughs> well, she was a fussy little animal, and uh, certainly fun to watch as she poked around the various industries in downtown Guelph. Rebuilt many times, I'm sure. No sooner had 6301 moved out of the way than the uh, local accommodation, which used to run from Guelph to Guelph Junction on the CPR for connecting with the CPR passenger service from Toronto to London, left town. And uh, most of the uh, operating uh, operations for this service was performed by a gas electric car, or doodle bug as we used to call them, and in particular, uh, 9,004 saw a lot of service between Guelph. I believe that this uh, station is still standing, John, but whether or not an operator is there, I'm not sure. Here comes 9,004, uh, a unit that was later to serve the Ottawa district to the ottawa Manawaki run. Very similar indeed to the THMB's 301, which a lot of us in the Hamilton area remember running between Hamilton and Waterford. This is at Campbellville, just east of Guelph Junction. We have a typical double header struggling up the hill to Guelph Junction from Lambton Yard. The first engine is one of your 2200s, 2236, followed by CP Mike 5371. A very, very, very common uh, arrangement. Danforth Station in the east end of Toronto. We have here again CN 6219 on the first section of train 6, the inner city limited to Montreal, also uh, known as the 4 o'clock flyer. Must have been around Christmas time, was it, John? Well, after Christmas, but if you remember, yeah. on Sunday afternoons, the train always ran in two sections. That's correct, yeah. First section was for Montreal, and the second section we have here with a 6400 class on the front was the Ottawa section. And, and it, it would naturally have a 6400 on the second section because it couldn't make the same time, I guess. Probably. It's 5594 slipping down the hill with a wave freight. Here we are again at Danforth Station with another look at first six, this time behind Northern 6205. The white running board, again, a Spadina engine. This is uh, the second section of the same train for Ottawa this time. Behind a ladder class, Northern 6241, struggling up the hill. Always made a wonderful sight coming up Danforth Hill. A great place to watch trains in the latter days of steam. I'm sure many of the people watching this video will have fond memories. 
Back at Sunnyside at the west end of Toronto, we have Royal Hudson 2838 with the overnight train from New York City. A very, very unusual assignment for this engine. Not so at that time, but originally 2838 and her sister engines were used between Toronto and Fort William on one of the longest steam runs in North America. Here we have train 94, the Maple Leaf, which was the overnight CNR service from New York City. 6068 would come on at Niagara Falls and bring the train into Toronto. West Toronto again, Doug, at the CPCN Junction. 2228, another one of the pusher engines, the G1 Pacifics that we've talked about, followed by CP Mike 5370. The G1s and the Mikes, the P2s, seem to always run in tandem. Here we have D10, class 1017, coming over the diamond, as it used to be called, on the passenger connection from the Mac tier subdivision into CPR West Toronto Station. Not quite sure what she's doing, but the joke, the people when they were joking would say it was the easy way to turn the locomotive around. The next scene, Doug, depicts the transition that had begun from steam to diesel. Here we have a very familiar engine to Toronto steam train watchers, Consolidation 3753, assisting a new road switcher, 8584, over the Diamond and up the Mac Tier subdivision. These 3700 class locomotives were known as mud hens to the shop people out in Lambton and many of them evolved into those 282-5200 class locomotives in the late 40s. This is Leeside, uh, brand new diesel units from Montreal Locomotive Works, 8729 and 8730 breaking in on a eastbound freight to Montreal. Here we are at Sunnyside again, and we have CN6258, working an extra freight west to Mimico. The 6200 uh, series northerns were used for freight service out of Mimico Yard in all directions, Doug. Um, here's 6256 with an eastbound freight headed uh, towards Montreal. They were just about as advanced steam power as the CN had in its freight service, and most of them went into operation in the mid-40s. Here comes 3249, a Mikado, again a displaced western locomotive, operating out of Mimico and doing yeoman service on freights in the Toronto and southern Ontario regions. Followed by a the uh, CPR local passenger train, Doug, from Hamilton to connect with the afternoon 4 o'clock train from Montreal, the pool train. This, uh, this service, uh, which began in the mid-40s, originally had a 2900, 2928, 2925. Uh, gradually, uh, the 1200s were worked into the pool, and they were regularly seen on this afternoon train. Here comes... Uh, afternoon transfer from Mimico Yard behind CN Pacific 5566. Which was uh, sort of identified by its giant Alesco feed water heater, as you can see there. That engine was very common on the Uxbridge sub. And again, seems to be my favorite, or certainly most photographed passenger train, is the Forest City for London, this time behind 6078. Easter weekend in 1957, we took a trip to um, St. Mary's on the CPR mixed train from Woodstock and one of the ubiquitous CPR D10 class 10 wheelers, 1086, was the motive power that day. St. Mary's is the end of the line and uh, the main reason for this branch line is the operation of the St. Mary's cement plant. This line has a number of interesting features, but one of them is the turntable, which is of the Armstrong type. That is, 
it has to be pushed manually and uh, half the battle was having enough strength to get the turntable into motion the other part of the battle was to have enough strength to slow the turntable down to a stop at the correct position Certainly no task for the weak or faint-hearted, John. And uh, you can see from this that it took all the muscles one had to do the job. There's another interesting feature is the little pump house for pumping water fed by steam from the locomotive. Bayview, Hamilton, my old stamping grounds. And here we have two sections, the New York train 712, New York to Toronto, and the advanced, advanced section is pulled by engine 2856. Another one of the Royal Hudsons. These locomotives were operating between Toronto and Hamilton, and the remaining part of the journey between Hamilton and Buffalo was handled by THB diesel power. Coming along behind is the second section of 712, which is our old friend 2838 in beautiful John Street condition, polished to a high gloss. These locomotives were a beauty to behold. The Bayview Tower, needless to say, is long gone. So is the Welland Junction Station. This was a CNR station in the midst of a triangle formed by the crossing of east-west Wabash freight line running from Windsor and St. Thomas to Fort Erie and the CNR freight line running down to Niagara Falls. Here we have 060 switcher 7507 turning around on the Y after doing some local switching. And then Doug we're back to another one of our favorite spots in Toronto, West Toronto CPR station. And engine 2841, another one of the Royal Hudsons that was on the north uh, run between Toronto and Fort William between 1938 and 1952. There she is backing into Lambton Yard uh, after leaving her freight train down in Parkdale Yard. Uh, the next uh, scene is one that is to be seen to be believed. This is a double-headed freight train with lead engine 6256 followed by 6401 in freight service. Now this is a unique photograph, I really believe. Well, there are two Northerns on their way to Stratford with a CNR freight train and probably the 6401 is heading that way to have some work done in the shops. Be a lot of clunking going on there, John. <laughs> And then we're off to Brockville, and here's G5 Pacific 1223 bringing in the afternoon pool train connection from Ottawa, where it'll be joined with the Montreal section from Montreal and heading for Toronto. And we're back at West Toronto again, and we have a double-headed freight, 2220 and 2858. The second engine, 2858, was a stranger in the Toronto area. It never ran out of John Street, but came from the Montreal region. And it was this day seen heading north on a time freight, possibly 962. I think you're right, on the way to Mactier, and then on out west towards Winnipeg. be interesting to know how far the 2858 went before it was relieved. Maybe to Carchet? or Chaplot. We're now back at Orangeville in the summer of 1957. G1 Pacific 2238 is on the local freight leaving Orangeville for Lampton Yard in Toronto with no freight out of Orangeville this day. This was the service locally known as the Moonbeam. Probably because most of the time it ran under the rays of the moon at night. And here we are at Palmerston, a mecca for steam fans in the 40s and 50s. It was the hub of the CNR operation in the Bruce Peninsula. In addition to a 
reasonable sized roundhouse, it was the transfer point for four or five different passenger train operations. Here we see one of the replacement diesels uh, moving into town with a way freight. And when we saw those diesels, John, we didn't realize their implications, that no, they were going to replace steam. Certainly didn't. This is the southbound accommodation from Owen Sound. Um, it was coming in behind CN Pacific 5079, and as soon as it had cleared into the station, 10-wheeler 1560, which had brought the mixed train in from Kincardine, moved in, out into the yard with its freight cars. In the meantime, 5079 was being taken off the Owen Sound to Guelph accommodation and replaced by Pacific 5136. This train would then proceed with 5136 down to Guelph or connect with the passenger service from Stratford or Toronto, and then 5136 would carry on down to Hamilton. All weather cab included rather a departure from most of the Pacifics that the CN ran. In the meantime, Pacific 5079, which had bought the train down from Owen Sound to uh, Palmerston, was run around the Y and backed on to train 171, which was the connecting train from Pam Palmerston to uh, Stratford and on to London. And here we see it leaving on the direct line to Stratford. John, is there much left at Palmerston today? And I'm afraid not. It's just a shadow of its former self. Uh, it is no longer uh, an operating center for CN. I believe there's some storage yards, but even the line from Guelph up to Palmerston has now been severed. Here's the town switcher, 7358, complete with aluminum running boards. The next view is the ever-present D10 out in Islington on the CPR coming along with a way freight. 832 to be exact, one of the lower number D10 10, 10 wheelers. Its sister engine we're going to see in a few minutes was the resident switcher at Port Burwell. This is the scene of our next Upper Canada Railway excursion. We took the regular mixed train service from Woodstock down to Port Burwell on the north shore of Lake Erie. This was in the dying days of car ferry operation. The ferry service from Ash to Beulah to Port Burwell and here we see 888 and in the process of unloading the freight cars which would make up the consist of the afternoon mixed train returning from Port Burwell up to Woodstock. When you look at these films, you really believe that time was of essence in those days. Certainly, there was no hurry at all. Port Burwell is still a fishing port on uh, Lake Erie, but as I said, the car ferry has long been out of service. Nine eighty six was the road engine, um, which would take the train, the mixed train, back up to Woodstock. There she is, moving up to the top end of the yard to back down onto the return train. You'll note, Doug, that the uh, water used on the, in this portion of the province for operation of these locomotives left a lot to be desired. You can see the dirty water on the streaks on the side of the boiler here. I think this is a typical 
operation of CPR that prevailed in southwestern Ontario right up into the mid-50s. Here we have a rather lengthy mixed train struggling out of Port Burwell on its way back to Woodstock. And of course the rail fans are out in full force. Maybe you recognize some of those faces. Certainly do. Showing the sunshine and a few cinders. A scene that will never be repeated. At least not in revenue service. I don't suppose there's any mixed train operation left in Ontario. I think it's all departed now. Here we yeah. are at Beaverton on the line from Lindsay over to Aurelia and Midland. This is the afternoon train from Lindsay. To, 5589 uh, is it, 55 John? 5589 on its way up to Aurelia where we would pick up passengers from the Toronto North Bay passenger train and proceed on into Midland. Station and track here are long gone. Very, very interesting consist, eh? Railway post office car there, wooden sheath. Now we're at Georgetown, and outside the station we're waiting to see train 60, 60, 61, Hamilton to Allendale, engine 5607. Well, that's a substitute, because this was normally the famous gas electric, which was known as D1. The engine man said the D stood for dog, and I don't think anyone in the Canadian National Railway understood the numbering scheme, but D1 had two cars which it towed. And they're on the back of this and they're train. they're on the back of this train, and mm -hmm. you'll see that they're considerably smaller than the normal size baggage and coach stock that was pulled by steam engines. They're 6,007. Again, bearing the stamp of the Spadina Roundhouse, that white running board, but this engine itself was a Halifax-based locomotive until the uh, era of 1955-56 when the diesels sent it up to southern Ontario. And these low-numbered 6,000 locomotives were a wonderful engine to see in operation. Doug, one of the earlier fan trips operated out of Toronto was run by the Toronto Train Trip Association in September of 1957. That association today is the Ontario Rail Association, home of 1057. This particular excursion ran from Toronto over to Port Colborne, where we took a good look at the Niagara-St. Catharines and Toronto Electric Railway, and then proceeded on down to Niagara Falls and back to Toronto. In the fall of 57, a number of railway enthusiasts from Toronto went to Montreal to ride an excursion of the Canadian Railway Historical Association. But before doing so, we visited Montreal West CP Station, and here's Jubilee 2929 with the morning train from Sutton, Quebec. We then went down to the CN Turcotte Yard to witness what was the one of the final months of operation of the commuter service from Dorval behind tank engine number 49, busily scurrying by for CN Central Station. Two examples of very, very small power, the Jubilee and the, the 49. Now we have CP engine 2828 Royal Hudson on train 502, inbound from Ottawa and bound for Windsor Station. Again, Doug, another one of, I guess, our favorite class of locomotive, kept in beautiful shape by the Glen Roundhouse staff. One of the great examples of beauty and technology of the 20th century, in my view, the Royal Hudson. The excursion that we were to ride was behind CPR Pacific 2467, and it was to take us into the Laurentian Mountains uh, we stopped at Shawbridge, Quebec to allow the morning regular passenger train to St. Agathe behind uh, G5 Pacific 1257 go past us. And then we all boarded on the train and followed northbound to look at the beautiful fall colors. And what a beautiful condition uh, 2467 is in. The boiler jacket has been polished to a high gloss. The running board and the tender have been 
washed down, hosed down, and cleaned and scrubbed in typical CP fashion, balanced against the beauty of autumn in the Laurentians, you get a excursion that will never be forgotten. Take a good look at the graphite gray boiler jacket. I guess that was a real hallmark of uh, the CPR, their steam locomotives. Is this a rigged picture, John, for a run past? Well, I do remember lining up um, with uh, a good number of the train's passengers to take pictures. They would then back the train up and bring it forward. But you'll notice here that they were running out of smoke, and there was a horrendous cry from the crowd saying, More smoke! And of course, as always, the CPR obliged accordingly. This is another run past, only this time some of us weren't sitting on terra firma. In fact, by the time I'd finished taking this picture, I realized I'd been standing on the edge of a swamp. I believe my feet were wet for the rest of the day. And this is Labelle, Quebec. The end uh, terminus of the trip where we turned uh, the Pacific around to head back to Montreal after a very successful and beautiful day of picture taking. Ferguson Avenue in Hamilton and engine 50, 1541 with train M233. Going up Ferguson Avenue to the Niagara Escarpment and I would imagine bound for Simcoe. This is something very close to your heart, Doug, I know. Up the hill, over the escarpment, the first major stop was Caledonia, where the line from Brantford to Fort Erie was intersected, and here we have C and Mike 3422 on the mixed train from Stratford to Fort Erie. Rather unusual power for this I train. I was going to say, the only Mikes I ever knew that pulled passenger trains were on that Toronto to North Bay train out of Union Station, number 49. Take a load of that coach, Doug, on the rear. I saw that. A wooden coach with the old CN decal slightly tilted at each end of the coach. This is the Caledonia Grand River Bridge, just south of the town of Caledonia, and we have the mixed train proceeding on down towards Simcoe. Many a picture was taken on that bridge in the days of steam, and I'm sure many more are taken now in uh, the days of the diesel. This is down in Simcoe, and the town switcher at that time was another one of our E-10 moguls, this time number 91. 1541 is doing the local switching, while 91 has the day off. At this point, the mixed train departed from Simcoe and headed down to Port Rowan. Port Rowan, of course, being another one of the North Shore Lake Erie fishing ports, well known for its fishing fleet, and here we have the mix proceeding through the community of Vittoria on its way down to Port Rowan. Doug, we're about to move from the beast to the beauty. The next scene is 3000 of the CP Railway, one of the famous Jubilee locomotives that you referred to earlier that hauled the fast intercity service from Toronto to London. This is in Windsor Yard in its declining days when it was used on an express train for handling express and mail from Windsor to London. Yes, these were very aesthetic engines. Built in 1936, five and all, 3000 and 3002 ran out of John Street and the western lines from Toronto to Windsor. 3001 was sent to Calgary where it had a nameplate on the side Chinook and 3003 and 3004 uh, were east out of Montreal between Montreal and Quebec City and were uh, seen at the Place Viget station. Lovely. In the speed annals of railway history involving the steam locomotive, the 3000 series would probably hold their own and it wasn't uncommon along the Chatham Flats to see a 3000 pulling a four car passenger train at over 100 miles an hour. Here we are at the London station at the end of the run. Note the uh, driving rod leading from the piston to the first driver. That tended to make them a little slippery and didn't help matters having 80 inch drivers either. 
We're now into 1958, and this is Weston, a suburb of Toronto, and we see the morning train from Owen Sound on the CN arriving behind the 5200 class Pacific. And from the vantage point of the CNE, coming westbound is Bullet-Nosed Betty 6069. You guessed it, on train number 75, the Forest City. The same location, but looking in the opposite direction, about a week later in the snow, here we have CN Hudson 5702 on the morning counterpart of the Forest City arriving from London on train 82. That locomotive, John, is in the CRHA Museum in Delson, Quebec. We're at Port Credit, about 20 miles west of Toronto Union Station, and approaching with a latter-day northern, number 6241, is, a, is an eastbound freight from London. This was the beginning of the long lead into the Mimico Yard, and this freight train is slowing down to allow the head-end brake men to line up the switch to enter into that long lead. And Doug, literally, figuratively, physically, steam was about to be eclipsed by diesel power. And speak of the devil. Later the uh, same day, CPR, you guessed it, D-10 class 851 arrived with the CPR way freight from Lampton Yard on its way to Oakville. This was a well-known operation, used to take the whole day to travel approximately 35 miles. Mind you, they had a lot of switching to do along the way. This scene is at Campbellville, Ontario, on the Toronto side of Guelph Junction, and a great place to watch trains back in the days of steam. And here we have a CP double-headed freight westbound out of Lambton climbing the grade. Today, as the pilot engine, we have a rather interesting locomotive, H1A2803. Once a very, very proud passenger engine operating out of the Glen Yard in Montreal on transcontinental trains, today it has been relegated to pilot service. It's best known for its pulling of the 50th anniversary train out of Windsor Station in July of 1936. Second engine is Mikado 5459. Doug, from CPR Hudson's to CNR Hudson's. Well, I have to profess a, vi a bias here, John. I was an H1A fan. Well, it's very hard, though, not to appreciate what we're about to see. This is CN Hudson 5703 in full cry at approximately 85 miles an hour westbound with the Forest City in Bronte in February of 1958. And this is the engine that's disguised as engine 5700 in the Museum of Science and Technology in Ottawa. Doug, remember I talked a little earlier about CPR 851 on the way freight? Well, she's finally going to make it to the end of her line, vainly trying to catch up with the Forest City. A long day for the crew, I'm sure. Very long indeed. And rushing eastbound, Engine 6020, leading a passenger train extra from Niagara Falls, Ontario. Doug, this brings us to the last operating area of CPR steam, Port McNichol on the south end of Georgian Bay. It seems that the motive power department people in the head office of CP in Windsor Station had forgotten about Port McNichol, but many a railway enthusiast remembers Port McNichol, where many of them descended upon this area to photograph last operating steam locomotives in eastern Canada in 1960. However, here we have Consolidation 3632 shunting in the afternoon, moving grain cars around, 
Fort McNichol was a storage, winter storage place for grain shipped out of the lakehead. Was kept, grain was kept here during the winter months and then moved out in the springtime down to the Atlantic seaboard. Whenever I think of Port McNichol, John, I think of the Hogs Bay Trestle. What a tremendous piece of construction that was. And I understand when they dismantled it just recently, a lot of the timber that was implemented uh, to make it uh, is still in very good condition and was sold for construction purposes. Port McNichol um, was the terminus of one of the famous boat train operations of Canadian Pacific Railway fame. Usually when you think of boat train operations, you think of trains carrying passengers down to the Atlantic seaboard ports or embarking upon transatlantic ocean liners. However, CPR ran two lake boats from Port McNichol up through Georgian Bay and Lake Huron and Lake Superior to Thun uh, Thunder Bay, or in those days, Port William and Port Arthur as they were known, and there was a bi-weekly boat train special from Toronto to Port McNichol in the summer months to connect with these two steamers. I think you'll agree with me, John, that this is a rather novel way to move snow filling up uh, gondolas with the stuff. This is the Martyr Shrine on the way over to Midland, and 3632 is proceeding over the Y River, over a wooden trestle with the afternoon way freight from Port McNichol to Midland, conveying again one or two cars for the green terminal in Midland. 3632 and its sister 3722 were the last of the consolidations operating in this part of the country and lasted right up, as I have indicated earlier, to the final days of steam in March of 1960. Here we are in Midland, Doug, with the modern CNR station in the foreground with 3632 arriving from Port McNichol. These engines were serviced at Lambton, I believe, were they, John? That is correct. Mm -hmm. And as uh, you're probably aware, Doug, the bits and pieces to keep these locomotives in their long years of service were put together in the back shops at Lambton. Here we are back at the Y River crossing the wooden trestle again on our way back tender first to Port McNichol. This particular scene was taken from the old Fort St. Marie among the Hurons. And as one railway enthusiast was heard to say, as 3632 was making one of her trips, he wondered why the Jesuit priests had built their fort so close to the railway right-of-way. Doug, the famous hog bay trestle that you were talking about. And there's the hogger leaning on the old throttle as he drifts across the trestle. Presumably he was checking to make sure that all the timbers were holding together. Which indeed they did, and as I mentioned earlier, and then some. Well, Doug, really this is the twilight of steam. Here's our favorite Hudson, 2857, arriving in West Toronto Station from a run, special run from Port McNichol. And this has been an absolutely superb hour with you, John, reminiscing about trains of the past. Let's get together for Volume 2 of Canadian Steam on the Move.